getting nicked out here on my. Oh, could I bum a cigarette? But, uh, 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 editor, every time I go like this for the whole weekend, put nights on. <laughs> After denying previous accusations, Jake Paul is set to battle yet another accusation as regards his use of drugs from his next opponent, Mike Tyson. Unlike others, Mike wasn't making a causal claim as he provided a video evidence to support his claims. And with the look of things, this may be the final straw that breaks the camel's back for Jake Paul after denying several accusations in recent times. Let's get into the stir. I haven't drank or uh, took drugs in six days. And for me, that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else to think I was sober, but I'm not. This is my sixth day. I'm never going to use again. The fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has turned out to be one of the most anticipated matches in boxing this year. That exactly was Jake Paul's biggest wish in the first place, making it known when he announced the bout over a month ago. Jake Paul hysterically said, It's crazy to think that in my second pro fight, I went viral for knocking out Nate Robinson on Mike Tyson's undercard. Now, Less than four years later, I'm stepping up to face Tyson myself to see if I have what it takes to beat one of boxing's most notorious fighters and biggest icons. Within just two and a half years of founding MVP, we're about to produce the biggest fight in history, a fight in the biggest NFL stadium in the US, broadcast live on the biggest streaming platform in the world, a testament to all we've accomplished in such a short amount of time. Whether you're tuning in on Netflix or showing out in person, whether you're Team Paul or Team Tyson, or whether you're a lifelong boxing fan or watching your first fight, you're not going to want to miss this event. Of all contemporary boxers to fight, it is evident Jake Paul chose Mike Tyson for absolutely no boxing reasons, but for other benefits that anyone would get by having a fight against the baddest man on the planet. Iron Mike Tyson is a big name in boxing, and Jake Paul is ready to use all of that bigness to his advantage. I, I want to face big names and make historic pay-per-views and challenge myself more and more with each. Truly, I mean that. And as a result, many have queried the young man who loudly claimed his dream was to become a world champion one day. Well, everyone knows that the only way to become anything close to that is by having fights against ranked contemporary boxers who have similar dreams like you. Truly, I mean that. And this is just the start. I'm two years in. I have a long way to go and I am going to build and build and build and we will see who is on that roadmap, whether it's contenders or whether it's uh, McGregor, whether it's Mike Tyson. And guess what? The one time Jake Paul tried such, it ended in the first loss of his boxing career. Now here's what many don't know about Jake Paul. He has obviously chosen Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson gave him what seemed like a two-in-one goal. Jake Paul has hardly received accolades for his nine wins and six knockout victories in 10 bouts, considering the majority of his victories were against older boxers. He's not ready to stop that, but he's chosen Tyson as his opponent, hoping to get the accolades the other victories couldn't give him. But you should trust the fans of the sport. In fact, fighting Tyson has now brought him more trolls than the other nine combined. His other goal is the likelier goal to be achieved, which is to make some good money. Eventually, he'd have to take one and leave the other. He'd find the money and views in Tyson, but he won't find the recognition from this Tyson. If this happened 35 years ago, when Mike Tyson was on top of his game, that would have been a bold move from him. In fact, it would only be concluded that he's chosen an early death for himself. But despite that Tyson is completely past his prime, many fans still continue to wish a sad rest in peace, believing that fighting any version of Mike Tyson at all, especially for an unserious boxer like Jake Paul, is a death sentence. Well, an ignorant onlooker who is unaware of the caliber of boxing bouts that would hold this year might think supporters are only looking forward to the Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul bout because the year is filled with boring, lackluster boxing matches. But that's far from it. In the same year, we have Gervonta Tank Davis versus Frank Martin, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, Tyson Fury versus Oleksandr Usyk, Isaac Cruz versus Roly Romero, and even Anthony Joshua versus Francis. It has come as a shock to many that with this caliber of bouts, one of the most anticipated remains Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Jake Paul and Tyson is that kind of match that you anticipate like a delicious dinner after a long day's work. And it isn't just because fans are curious about the Iron Mike Tyson that would be going into the ring. Truly. 
fans are finding answers to their biggest question in the bout, which is if the Iron Mike Tyson that would be hopping into the ring on July 20th would be the same Iron Mike Tyson many knew in the 80s and 90s. But more than the questions, what has made fans distractedly fix their gaze on July 20th is how Mike Tyson and Jake Paul have been bringing some liveliness and intensity into the buildups. Once the match was announced, Mike Tyson made the gym his second home, like he would do during his heydays. But that wasn't all. Mike Tyson would then come with fierce warnings after showing footage of himself in training. Day three, you still want to with me? Well, Jake Paul copied that a few times, but his training sessions, as fans would claim, lacked the vigor and energy that Mike Tyson's sessions characterized. But Jake Paul isn't one to take so seriously. Hence, on several occasions, he's moved outside the gym and hurled trolls, jests, and insults at Mike Tyson, and expectedly the most notable of them is the ear bite against Evander Holyfield. Jake Paul has proven to derive so much joy in awakening memories of June 28, 1997, where Tyson was the protagonist in an ear bite situation against former undisputed world heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Though many have queried Jake Paul's sensitivity, he has remained unfazed and has released two more videos with allusions to the same event. Another time, he posted a picture of him and Tyson and added the caption, the greatest heavyweight boxer on the planet, Mike Tyson. That's some sort of dumb joke even to the person who knows the least person about boxing? Well, those were the words of the first fan who commented on the post saying, you are a walking joke. Another wished him a subtle and implied rest in peace and wrote, Jake Paul's next fight, Muhammad Ali. Well, this final person had a more straightforward way of wishing Jake Paul a tragic outing on July 20th. He wrote, Jake Paul 19, 97 to 20, 24. It tells you how much of a joke many saw his caption of being the greatest heavyweight boxer on the planet. In fact, Jake Paul's popularity has nothing to do with his conquests in the boxing ring, while Tyson had the world of boxing firmly under his feet at just the age of 20, remaining the youngest ever boxer in the history of boxing to hold the World Heavyweight Championship title. And what Jake Paul has been doing since his very first boxing game, where he featured on the undercard of Mike Tyson vs. Roy Jones Jr., is to bring his fame from YouTube and other platforms he has graced, like Disney, to boxing. He's done this quite successfully, but whether it would get him to his dream of being a world champion, that remains a rhetorical question. Now what's happened between both boxers is that Mike Tyson has made a shocking revelation about Jake Paul. Really, it's not a revelation that Mike Tyson is totally innocent about, as the baddest man on the planet also had intense struggles with it for most parts of his life. Well, Mike Tyson recently released footage of Jake Paul doing COC at an excessive rate, and beyond that, he also followed his illegal drug use with some very weird actions, like one that has lost his mind. The footage is definitely set to go viral, as Jake Paul keeps putting himself on people's faces, and he ends up poking their eyes as well. He's become an unrepentant villain, and who wouldn't love to see the downfall of a villain? But this is actually not the first time Jake Paul would be facing hard drugs allegations. He'd once been questioned by fans for taking hard drugs in public. Jake Paul was spotted grabbing his nose several times, and some viewers speculated this was a telltale sign that the YouTuber turned fighter had been doing drugs, specifically cocaine. However, he has since said that these claims were untrue. In a 16-minute YouTube video titled My Response to the Allegations, he jokingly put a bunch of Coca-Cola bottles and cans on the ground as the cameraman walked in. He pretended to be absolutely wired, where he took off his top and went over to a plate full of white powder and chucked it in the air. However, that was just all a bit. Jake then explained how sweaty he gets on any given day. The camera zoomed up to his nose and he said the beads had gathered after just a few minutes of existing. He revealed that to remedy that situation, he constantly has to wipe the sweat from his nose. He said that he was not using cocaine at the event and explained how the post-fight brawl that transpired between his brother, Logan Paul, and Dillian Dennis played into the sequence that had many believing he was doing drugs. Jake said, This is the thing, is I go to brawl in the ring to save my freaking brother. 40 grown men around me, everyone's huffing and puffing, I'm yelling, you bitch, you're lucky I didn't kill you, and I'm literally drenched in sweat. I come out, everyone knows I'm the sweatiest person in the world. 
So I get into the ring to like go be there for my brother and shit. And I put my hat on and I'm literally sweating down my face. So I'm just like this motions rubbing his face, trying to get the sweat off of my freaking face. Jake joked that he is more of a mushrooms and wine kind of guy. The YouTuber turned boxer admitted that it may have looked like he was doing cocaine and was trying to clear his nose, but said it would be outrageous to do that at his brother's boxing match. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever come into a fight high, Mike? Huh? Did you ever come into a fight high? No, cocaine. <laughs> Jake's girlfriend, Yuta Leerdam, also said his nose sweat is a problem because it sometimes rubs off her foundation and makes her look like Rudolph. However, many fans refuse to believe the problem child, and with the latest allegation, Jake Paul might be set to go in the way of Tyson Fury. However, that's a bit worrisome. If Tyson's claims are true and his leaked footage isn't just one of the many tricks and gimmicks that anyone would expect from Jake Paul. Jake Paul isn't one to ever appear depressed or sad, so why he would be caught doing cosy remains worrisome. But if there's a lesson the boxing world learnt from Tyson Fury, it's that many people go through stuff, and those around them would have no idea about it at all. Fury had one of the toughest struggles with drugs, depression, and his mental health that eventually led him to a long break off boxing. Fury once said in an interview, mental health has got to be the biggest battle I've ever, ever fought with more than any opponent, Fury has said. For this reason, Fury, who has struggled with depression and been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, describes mental illness as a silent killer. In an interview, he explained, I could be on the verge of suicide and you couldn't tell because you can't see inside someone's mind. And truly, Fury had been on the verge of suicide before. And coincidentally, it was while he was also on the verge of greatness. In late 2015, Fury won his first world title against Vladimir Klitschko, a title he worked his whole life to achieve. Following that fight, he fell into the darkest place of his life. For 18 whole months, he had no desire to live. He found no meaning in his achievements. He did not want to wake up anymore, despite having fortune, fame, a wife, and three children. He had every luxury one would desire, but they all looked like nothing. In 2016, he was seconds away from crashing his car into a bridge at 190 mph before thinking about his family and pulling over before it was too late. With every good high, there's got to be a good low, Tyson Fury said. With almost every great high in Fury's life, there has been a low period that he couldn't control. This is a common sign of bipolar disorder, extreme changes in mood and behavior. During low periods of bipolar disorder, a person may experience low energy, hopelessness, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, and the inability to enjoy things they usually like to do. These episodes can last for weeks or months at a time, and then the question remains if what's happening to Jake Paul, a repeat of Fury's battle, having an inexplicable low just when he's at his highest, with the biggest fight of his career coming closer. However, in his state of depression, Fury did not know how to cope. Time and time again, he tried to push his negative thoughts and feelings away. He tried to carry on with his career, with his family, and to keep his head up. After some time, though, this could not keep up. He could no longer bottle things up. So he turned to the bottle to alleviate the pain. He started drinking heavily. Now Tyson was not a drinker before. He had maybe one, two drinks a year, and never touched a drug in his life. During this 18-month period of darkness, however, that all changed. He said in his interview, when I had a drink, it made the pain go away. Not pain as in physical pain, but pain as in the longing and the repetitive thinking, day in and day out, that won't go away. Fury continued to explain how alcohol can mask the pain temporarily, but when you wake up the next day, you're even more depressed than you started. It wasn't long before his drinking turned into drug use. He didn't care about dying and wasn't afraid to try anything that might numb the pain. This is common among those struggling with mental health disorders like depression. When you do not know how to properly cope with mental suffering, escaping it through alcohol or drugs seems to do the trick. This is called self-medication. The more drugs and alcohol are used, however, the more the body becomes reliant on them. And that's when addiction, formerly called a substance use disorder, kicks in. All the while, drugs can exacerbate the symptoms of a mental illness and make it substantially worse. After over a year of heavy drinking, drug use, and depression, Tyson Fury had a breakdown. A panic attack led him to the hospital, where he was officially diagnosed with bipolar disorder. 
During this stretch of time, Tyson Fury lost his boxing license due to failed drug tests. He owed millions of dollars in lawyer's fees, weighed in at over 400 pounds, and was deemed medically unfit to box by a world-renowned psychiatrist. At this point, many thought his fighting career was over. His prospective opponent, Deontay Wilder, even said he would never make a comeback. And that, combined with the love of his family, was what motivated Tyson Fury to change. Tyson Fury's recovery was rooted in prayer, love, and motivation. He started setting goals for himself, one of them being to not only make the comeback Wilder said he wouldn't, but also fight Wilder, who was also undefeated at the time. He re-established an exercise routine, starting with small runs every day. He started working with a new trainer, was provided a clean bill of health, and was re-granted his license to box. He explained that the key assets to his recovery were, and continue to be, exercise, good nutrition, establishment of goals, and everyday routine, prayer, and communication. At 35 years old, Tyson Fury has found his path as a mental health advocate. He uses his platform as a boxing world champion to spread awareness about mental health, to smash the stigma, and to encourage those suffering to seek help. The truth is, people everywhere are struggling with mental health disorders, but they are not always apparent. Unlike physical disability or illness, mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder do not have obviously outward symptoms. And again, the big question is, if Jake Paul is suffering from this, well, if that's the case, then what should have been about on July 20th should be made a therapy session instead. If there's one person who could help Jake Paul out of whatever damage he might be causing himself, then it's Iron Mike Tyson, who's had a painful experience with hard drugs as well. The former world champion also struggled with drugs and alcohol addiction at the latter stages of his career before later overcoming those addictions. I want to live a different life now. I want to live my sober life. I don't want to die. I'm on the verge of dying because I'm a vicious alcoholic. Tyson said in a press conference some time ago. However, he detailed his experience with drugs and how he was able to conquer the addiction that has held many bounds over the years. I haven't taken drugs in six years, and for me that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else that thinks I was sober, but I'm not. This is my sixth year. I'm never going to use it again. Mike Tyson till date still talks about his past with drugs and alcohol addiction as he continues to set the example for so many young boxers and fans who look up to him. I haven't drank uh, two drugs in six days and for me that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else and think I was sober but I'm not. This is my sixth day. I'm never going to use it again. It has a venom in it. When you smoke it, once I tried it, boom! The only thing I was conscious about was out. My brain was still functioning. My thoughts, I could still talk to myself. I could hear my mind, and I killed myself, just as if I'm dying. It's really mind-blowing. My whole life totally changed. It sounds like a movie script. I wake up, I'm smiling, I'm laughing. I say, what the hell has happened? I had no idea. It lasts forever, but it was only 15 minutes. It felt like hours. It was frightening. It sounds like a, a movie strip, a script, but it's really um, the real deal. At that moment, you're talking about like you come to and you are altered. You are altered and it's stayed. Am, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I wake up, I'm happy, I'm laughing, I'm smiling. I think, what the f what really? happened? Yeah. When it comes to drug tests, we can all beat the cock. We can all beat cock drug testing. You stay away from it for three days or so. We could beat that, right? But for weed, we got 45 days. We got to wait 45 days in our system. And I think it stays in our system because it belongs there. I'm the drug test. You know, we could all beat the cocaine. We could all beat cocaine drug testing. You have to stay away from it for three days or so. We could beat that, right? But for weed, we got 45 days. Yeah. We got to wait 45 days in our system. Cox comes out because it doesn't belong there. Our body's trying to get rid of it. We do some cocaine. We shut down. Boom. All of our systems shut down. We don't hear anything. We don't see anything. It's all an illusion. We don't hear. We don't see. We're on some energy we don't even know about. Undoubtedly, more investigations would be carried out on Mike Tyson's leaked footage. And if Jake Paul is found guilty of doping, we might see him get a penalty similar to the one Tyson Fury got some years ago. His license might be seized or he could be banned from the sport for a while. Regardless of whatever decision they stick with, Jake Paul's drug allegations have become the latest threat in the bout between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. 
After surviving the fears of the age difference, alongside Mike Tyson's health safety and eligibility, Jake Paul's drug issues would now be investigated duly to determine if the fight remains a possibility or it was all a dream. But what boxing fans would love is that come July 20th, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul Lockhorns at the AT&T Stadium, Arlington, Texas, and expectedly, Mike Tyson ends Jake Paul in the very first round. The joy many would burst out with would be unimaginable. And that's all for now. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this.